Roland, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, before I turn it over to um, our hosts, uh, Push Buffalo and Hester Street, I just want to say congratulations to everybody. Thank you for applying and participating. This is very much an experimental program uh, birthed by our Secretary of State, Rosanna Rosado, after a visit to uh, Push Buffalo. Um, it's experimental in the sense that it doesn't really fit into one category. It's a green tech training initiative in underserved communities, but that's not all it is. It's a green uh, sustainable development, uh, community development program, but that's not all it is. And, um, and it's an environmental justice um, initiative, of course, um, but that's not all. So I've advertised this initiative far and wide to several other agencies and um, has it has piqued their interest. They've been very interested in learning as we see from participation on the call today uh, and helping with this. So we're running through, um, you know, a pilot in effect and reporting out on how this model uh, works. We certainly know it works um, with PUSH and HESTER and we want to see how it can work in its different forms in other parts of the state. So that said, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I think this webinar is a good idea to give us things to think about, things we might do in the interim before we hold um, the actual trainings in uh, the spring. So Rawa and Push, you wanna kick this off? I'm not either, am I? Can the folks at Push Buffalo hear me? Michael, you said they are muted. How could that be? Doesn't show them as muted. But as in Rawa? She's muted. I didn't. Hello, can you hear us now? Yep. Oh, great. Okay, somehow you went on mute. But anyway, hopefully everybody can hear and uh, you heard my intro, so yeah. take it away. I did. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's, this is such an exciting call for us because we've been hoping to launch this for quite some time and it's, I think, a really exciting initiative. As Paul said, um, this was really um, initiated by Commissioner Rosada from DOS after her visit to Buffalo and taking a very uh, short but fast um, green development zone tour. Um, and actually, let me back up a little bit. So my name is Rawa Kermatsian and I'm the director here at PUSH. Um, and so, you know, she asked a really good question, which is why aren't folks doing what y'all are doing across the state? And so I sort of challenged her back to say, well, I don't know, you're, you know, you've got kind of a bigger lens than I do, so how can we figure out how to do that? Um, and through a lot of conversations with her staff and others, we were able to uh, create this GreenWorks initiative. The team here at PUSH is um, Emily Tirana and uh, Clark Gocker. And really, it's um, this idea that place-based work is really important, that it's important to pass big policy um, changes at the state level, at the county level, at the city level, but how they get translated um, even when we get to neighborhoods and, um, you know, where places where people are living, that there has to be some nuance to them and that, um, you know, they're going to look a little bit different based on people's challenges and opportunities, the environment, um, and the needs of the people that are living there. And so that is really what I think GreenWorks is. Um, and what we do, as Paul explained, is we work intersectionally um, at Push Buffalo. We're a 14-year-old organization that works at the intersections of racial, economic, and environmental justice. Um, and we practice in all of the different ways by engaging the local residents and harnessing their social capital and um, um, expertise because they know this place better than most. They also can better identify what are the real needs that they have and then we work with them um, and bring resources into to make those goals real. Um, 
One thing I will say is also our collaboration with Hester Street goes all the way back to 2015 uh, when the community told us that they wanted us to take control of an abandoned school building that had been vacant for about a decade, um, but it's in the middle of the green development zone in the heart of this community. Um, and we weren't sure how we were going to do that. And through a lot of community engagement and working with Hester Street, that really was just like a perfect fit for us to help us think through the planning, make it make the complex issues really accessible to our community members, um, and uh, worked with us over a three-year period, engaging hundreds and hundreds of people um, to make the School 77 project a reality. Uh, what School 77 is today is an intergenerationally programmed space that has um, 30 affordable senior apartments. It's also a mixed-use space uh, where push bus will can finally be under one roof. So our offices are, this is our new headquarters. Uh, the auditorium, the community wanted it to be converted into a presentation space that was accessible and affordable to the community. So they uh, selected an, a 40-year-old uh, political activist theater company called Ujima and converted that space into um, a theater. And another organization, which is Peace of the City, that serves youth from kindergarten all the way until they graduate in high school, in school and after school, homework help support, as well as some social enterprises for their older uh, youth. Uh, and then we work with uh, one of our uh, member-led committees is the Energy Democracy Committee that was working on the REF process and the regulatory um, uh, process that the PSC uh, had put out in 2014. And they were able to advocate and win community shared solar. And so we put the first 100% community solar um, um, on top of this roof. Um, another thing that we were able to do uh, was use this entire campus and design it as a stormwater management equal landscape. And we were able to train uh, 16 to 21 year olds in doing um, nature-based solutions to mitigate stormwater and use it as a training opportunity through the uh, support from the DEC. Um, so yeah, so that's all I'll say, and so we think that this is a pretty good formula, winning formula, and we want to be able to share our model with others. Um, and you know, I think our promise is that we are we are going to put out the frameworks that we use for the type of work that we do, but that we would be working very intentionally with the selected green leader communities uh, to find out what opportunities and what challenges they have in their communities and what will work best for them. I'll stop there and kick it off to Clark. So good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, Clark Docker. I'm the Director of Policy and Strategy here at PUSH. Um, and actually, I, I want to pause and just kind of uh, um, you hear from folks on the call you know, by way of introduction. If, if folks want to can just do roll call, um, I think if you want to go back a slide, Paul, I think we listed the, the Green Leader cohort members. Um, so this is a, a collaboration on the left there between PUSH, Hester Street, and the Department of State. Uh, and then the green leaders who were selected to participate in this first cohort uh, include RUPCO, the Sullivan County Land Bank Corporation, and RADIX. Um, and so if, if folks uh, at the state, if you could unmute um, people as we kind of run down that list, but we did budget time uh, on the agenda to just do some, some introductions. We want to you know, personalize this with this kind of first pass on this webinar. Uh, and as we kind of uh, uh, build out this initiative together, um, really kind of keeping an eye to developing transformative relationships in which uh, you know, we can be kind of counting on uh, one another to uh, provide um, kind of mutual support and, and uh, kind of peer-to-peer -peer assistance uh, through the, the training and then some of the, the project development work. So um, maybe folks at, at RUPCO who are participating, if you all want to identify yourselves and, and just give a quick introduction to, to, to RUPCO. All right, I don't know how to blanketly unmute everybody, so we're going through right now. I just, uh, yeah, blankly tell. Uh. Okay, that seems like I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Great. Great. So I'm Mike Darcy. I am a uh, outreach coordinator here at RUPCO. I have been here working under Guy Kemp, the Vice President of Community Development, for about nine years now. Um, hello to my friends up in PUSH. Hello, Clark. Good to see you again. Um, Rupco is excited uh, for this initiative, and we are happy to be partnering with uh, 
Push and all of our partners. Uh, Guy couldn't make it today. Uh, he had a conflict in his scheduling, so I'm here uh, taking notes, uh, and uh, I'm going to give him some feedback on what we talked about, and uh, we look forward to having a conversation or addressing uh, the needs of uh, everyone that deserves quality, healthy, and sustainable housing. Great. Yeah, maybe folks with the Sullivan County Land Bank. Oh, this this is Jill. Can you hear us? Yes. We're on. Yes? You can hear yes. us? Excellent. Uh, so uh, I'm Jill Weyer. I'm the Executive Director of the Sullivan County Land Bank, and I am joined by Eugenia Manuelian, who is a planner here at Sullivan County Division of Planning, as well as Laura Quigley, who is our Director of Workforce Development for the county. And in a satellite office, we have Juan Journet from Sullivan Renaissance, um, which is a beautification group that's been working with us on programming, um, and Vicki Ferguson, who is a Village of Liberty trustee and a land bank board member. So we are excited to work together um, and come up with a project and, and learn from you guys. So thank you for allowing us to be a part of this. Thank you, Jill. Thanks, Juan. <laughs> Do we have anybody from Radix on the webinar? Right, we, maybe we don't, and that's okay. We, we can follow up with them. Um, yeah. yeah, let me try this again. For some reason, <laughs> it, it, as time goes on, the, the system just automatically mute. What's this, Scott? Scott, are you there? Scott? Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, well, now we can. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you all so much. My name is Scott Kellogg. I'm the Educational Director at the Radix Ecological Sustainability Center. We're a nonprofit organization based out of the south end of Albany, New York, partnering uh, on this program with A Village East, which is a community partner of ours. And collectively, we're all working in a number of different areas, including food justice and environmental justice advocacy, working to teach environmental education to youth in the local area, working with after-school programs for high school students to teach them job skills, and really working at the intersection of urban agriculture, uh, safe and affordable housing, and uh, just sustainability. So uh, we're very excited to be part of this project, and thank you very much for having us. That's great. Thanks, Scott. I think that, yeah, I think that uh, is everybody, or at least each of the three organizations. Again, appreciate folks' attendance today. And, and Paul, if you want to advance a few slides, I think we're at uh, the background slide. Yep, perfect. Yep. So I'm going to just kind of provide a little bit of context for uh, the Greenworks initiative. Um, so by way of background, um, the, the visit mentioned by the, the commissioner of the Department of State, that actually occurred several years ago. And so it's uh, you know, taken us two to three years to, to get to this point. Um, and, and I think the, the, the timing of that kind of forward movement has actually turned out to be pretty pretty perfect. Um, folks, you know, may be aware in uh, June of, of this year, 2019, at the end of the legislative session, uh, the New York State Legislature uh, passed um, really the most progressive climate legislation in the country. Uh, the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act was then signed into law by Governor Cuomo in July. Um, it provides kind of the um, you know, the, the policy context through which the Greenworks Initiative will unfold, and I think uh, you know, points to a lot of the opportunity that we believe this initiative uh, uh, can, can leverage and, and move towards. And so real quick, uh, the CLCPA uh, set in law uh, a net zero emission standard 
uh, economy-wide for New York State uh, by, by 2050. Um, so really across all sectors of the economy by mid-century, we'll have um, kind of liberated ourselves from fossil fuel usage in our automobiles, in our homes, in our industrial processes. Uh, and so we're you know, super excited by that. And, and again, I think uh, New York is now a, um, you know, leading the way across the country in, in operationalizing climate commitments. Um, another component of the bill, which was, uh, I think, near and dear to, to our uh, work here at PUSH and a lot of our advocacy around the legislation, uh, was a commitment to climate justice and equity. Um, the, the final version of the CLCPA uh, commits New York to investing in up to third, or a minimum of 35% of the benefits of public spending in climate vulnerable and disadvantaged communities. Um, and that the state will be responsible for you know, tracking those investments uh, to ensure that you know, justice is served to, to the most vulnerable among us. Um, and we see the, 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 the kind of uh, training and the, the kind of um, you know, project demonstration and project development that is possible through GreenWorks to be kind of a, a leading edge of how the state uh, could invest in uh, implementation of CLCPA uh, across environmental justice communities uh, in New York. And so um, I think there'll be a, a, a kind of a, a spotlight on a lot of the work uh, that we do through this initiative uh, that'll have kind of a, a feedback loop to uh, the Department of State and other state agencies. And, um, and we've been encouraged in conversations with, with Paul and his team that uh, you know, DOS will do its part to uh, you know, work with the likes of NYSERDA and DOL and DEC to uh, kind of show that uh, investments in this kind of capacity building initiative uh, will really be instrumental to deliver on uh, the commitments uh, in the CLCPA and, and the legal mandates. Um, next slide. So, yeah, the opportunity to kind of put a point on it, uh, the GreenWorks Initiative uh, you know, provides an opportunity for local organizations across the state to build capacity, to plan, design, and demonstrate just and equitable solutions to the intersecting crises of climate change, environmental racism, housing affordability and access to family sustaining jobs. And it sounds like a lot of folks uh, from across the cohort, um, you have a lot of deep experience you know, working in these kinds of intersectional ways. And so um, I think we'll you know, open the space in the spring with the first training institute, um, you know, just paying respect to a lot of the achievements and the hard work that folks have done and understanding that and you know, this isn't a top-down training model, but that we have a lot to learn from one another as kind of practitioners in the space. Um, so next slide, and I'm going to hand it off to my colleague, Emily. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Emily Tirana. I'm the co-director of organizing here at Push Buffalo, and I share the sentiments of uh, Rao and Clark and everyone on the call just being so excited um, of being here with all of you and setting up a really exciting and groundbreaking body of work that we're all going to engage in together. Um, so that just feels like really, really good. Um, so I'm, I am going to talk to you all about the, the kind of ins and outs of what our training institute is going to really entail. Um, so this GreenWorks is both a mixture of technical support um, by, by, by ourselves at PUSH and Hester Street, as well as this two-week training intensive that we're going to engage in with each other. Um, the first session is going to be held for a week here in Buffalo in the end of March. Hopefully things will have thawed out a little bit and you all will be able to see all of our work in our green development zone. Um, but really the, the thought behind this first week of training is to really ground us all um, or reground us and connect us to one another in our, in our commitment to justice because we know that this um, transition from a fossil fuel to a more living economy is inevitable, but that justice is not. And if we're going to be really thorough and complete with our, our work in environmental work, um, environmental justice work, then we need to look at the roots of what has caused this climate crisis, this environmental justice crisis in our communities to begin with. Um, so that's really where we start in, um, in the GreenWorks 
session one. So on that first day, we're going to be um, doing really awesome presentation and, and conversation with everyone around the Just Transition Framework. I would encourage people, if you have the time um, before, it's really fun to read um, our, our friends at Movement Generation really put together and are stewarding this work around just the Just Transition Framework of looking at the roots of our ecological crises being in racism, um, structural repression, um, capitalism, and all of those really fun, icky things. Um, and then how we actually move through them and how to live in this living economy with one another that we're, that we're working on building in this very technical space as well. Um, going through that, we're going to talk about history. What are the actual impacts of this extractive system on our communities? And I think, you know, at PUSH, um, the, the real heart and and center of the spiral of our work is always around community organizing. Um, we started as a community organizing organization and still very much are to this day, or else I wouldn't have a job. And, um, and all of our work, all of our, the Green Job in Green New York, and all of the great um, accomplishments that, that we've been able to, to work on and, and implement in our communities have stemmed from our community organizing. And that is really rooted in understanding um, the impact and the legacy of harm um, in, in what we're doing moving forward. So day two is really going to be centered on that. Um, hopefully we'll be able to, to go on a little field trip and look at some really cool green elevators here in Buffalo to, to be um, with the land and with the legacy of this extractive system. Day three, we move, we move, we start to move more into um, skills training, um, talking about community engagement um, and how we do community engagement that centers around people's self determination, um, and and again, like centering in our own stories and our own like self interest and commitment to this work, so that we're coming in and working with and not working over with communities. Um, and, and again, I think as Claire said, we have so much to learn from everyone and how we're already doing this work um, across the state. Um, day four, we're going to be talking more about the political landscape. We're going to have a really incredible opportunity to be with the Department of State um, and our partners from across um, Nigeria and other uh, the HCR, other state agencies, to talk about what is the kind of power map and the resource map and start to build those relationships so that as we get into the more technical pieces um, around building our, our projects out, that we already have these existing relationships and understanding of how um, the, the CLCPA implementation is going to affect all of our work and all of these different agencies moving forward. And then we're really going into to talking about um, and the last day here is uh, thinking about our, our next steps, our first mover project, um, and just kind of being able to have some time space to sink into everything that we um, have learned with each other throughout the week. Um, the next week, uh, in the next slide, is going to be about a month or so after that, and that's really where we're going to get, dig into the technical, technical things. Um, we have, um, we at Push and Texture Street intentionally haven't um, fully developed out what this week of training um, is going to be because we really want to hear from you all what is the support that you need, what are we looking to do um, so that we can tailor this second track of training into what folks really need to learn, what you need to practice, what kind of connections you need to make. Um, but it will definitely be, be focused more on the the how, whereas the first week is connected on the why. So, um, yeah, Paul, if you yeah. could advance the slide. Yeah, so here we're going to, um, this, this one will be held in Albany. I'm super excited about that. And we're going to really, yeah, dig into vacant urban land use, green construction, energy efficiency, um, as well as green infrastructure and community based renewable energy solutions. And there will also be a chance for us to work with one another, be in the kind of home base of a lot of these agencies of, around New York State, and continue to build with one another um, before we get into our technical assistance piece, which is the second part of this program. So, and after me is technical assistance. Thank you. Yeah, next slide, Paul. So I think this is where we we're hoping, sorry, hey everybody. Um, this is where we we're hoping, uh, Paul and your team, you guys can kind of just uh, you know, reground re the green leaders and, uh, you know, in, in the kind of 
the arc of this this program overall. So just you know, this first kind of pilot phase is getting folks um, you know, connected with us and Hester Street to develop uh, these action plans, and then there's an implementation phase to GreenWorks. If you just want to speak to that, that'd be great. Sure. We have some money set aside from past budgets um, through the Environmental Justice Fund at DEC uh, for implementation. And I'm guessing, although we don't have a, a ceiling yet, we haven't set the exact amount that groups would be eligible for. Um, we're trying to expand that amount a little bit because we have three green leader groups um, and we had accommodated uh, in our thinking early on up to six. So ideally there's a, a, you know, a good chunk of money available um, to implement the projects uh, that you develop. Um, certainly we will also all along the way be um, engaging our agency partners uh, for other funding sources that's part of the training is how to navigate the state system and pull all the pieces together. Um, and so uh, once you uh, submit, once you finish your training, we'll have certain guidelines on what you have to submit to us to justify that funding. And it'll be things like, you know, just showing uh, pro formas, project analysis, cost estimates, uh, things like that. We're developing those criteria now. Uh, it will not be a competitive solicitation, of course. It will just be the three green leaders um, meeting certain, um, basically, paperwork justification requirements, uh, and then we will um, have that pot of money available uh, for implementation. That's great. Thanks, Paul. Um, you could advance the slide. So before we jump into a Q&A, uh, Actually, I want to hand it off to Isela and the Hester Street team. If, if you all, I think we missed an important introduction up front. Uh, if you all want to just, you know, give a, a quick introduction to, to Hester Street, the role that you're playing in the project, that'd be great. And then we'll jump into Q&A. Okay. Uh, thank you, Clark, and, and the rest of the team. Um, hi, everybody. Um, so from Hester Street, it's myself, Isela, Jimena, and Kim. Um, we are um, with Hester Street. Uh, Hester Street is a uh, community uh, development uh, planning and design organization. Um, we're kind of located in the Lower East Side of New York City, um, but work all across the city and uh, more recently across the state of New York um, on a variety of, of projects, both large and small, but we're really kind of focused on um, offering technical assistance um, to Base building organizations, local governments, agencies, um, and you know, also at the state level, um, so that uh, people who live in their neighborhoods or in their cities are able to really shape the future um, of what those neighborhoods and those cities look like. Um, and so we are super excited to be partnering with PUSH, who we've partnered with before, as you heard from Mawa, um, and with you all um, to really, you know, think creatively about. Um, environmental justice, climate justice, um, uh, sustainability, and, and uh, you know, reimagining some of the, the vacant um, land um, or, you know, other, other segments of the, of the neighborhoods. Um, so we're super excited to hear more about the work that you all do. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about, you know, kind of those steps to get us more familiar with each other, um, certainly before the Institute. Thank you. Thanks, Isela. Uh, so yeah, so why don't we uh, jump into the Q&A. Uh, I think we've got, you know, about 10 to 15 minutes, um, and then we'll, we'll close out the webinar. So if um, folks want to raise their hand or... And then we'll do next steps. Yep, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll do next steps as we close. Uh, I think some of you have muted yourselves. You can unmute. I'm unmuting here as many as I can, or you can work through the, the chat room if you'd like. This is Isela. I, I believe that if you, up on, on the, I guess, left-hand side, there's like the file edit, that menu, if you click on participant, you should have the ability to unmute all as the host. Okay, hit participant. Yes, and then a drop-down menu will appear, and you should see the option of unmute all. So it's great out for me because I'm not a host, but it, it's, see if that works. That way you don't have to 
continue clicking. Yeah, it just goes to participants and lists them all and then chat. No, so there's a menu that looks on the left hand side of the of the screen. There's like file, edit, share, and then down the line there's participant. Oh there you go. Right there, right. Yeah, okay. Great, thanks. There we go. We learned Great. something today. Thank you, Zelda. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Does anybody on the line or anybody from the Green Leaders Group have um, particular projects in mind? And we didn't ask you to, to fully document them in the applications, but if there's anything you want to throw out to the group now, feel free. Uh, this is Jill in Sullivan County. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Nice. Right. Um, so we are partnering with or have partnered in the past with Sullivan Renaissance, who is, is Juan on the line um, as well, um, to work in Liberty. So we've targeted that community. Um, as far as a project, we really haven't decided yet on what it is, but we've been working with some partners. Um, we have a couple houses that we've acquired through the land bank that potentially could be part of it, um, but looking at ways to to engage the community more and get them, you know, involved in projects. So um, we'd be looking for your expertise on that. Okay, great. All of you have some, or the other two, have some relationship with your land banks. Is that correct, that there's some overlap and you might Yes, this is uh, the Radix Center with the village, uh, and we do have a relationship with our land bank. We have developed a few uh, vacant lot garden projects, and we're eager to work with them some more. Okay. We, we've also been working with the land bank. There's, there's in the south end neighborhood where we are. There's large tracts of vacant lots and. Um, land bank owned properties and so uh, they've put out a call for developers but we've been organizing uh, with the South End Community Collaborative which is across a bunch of different organizations here in the South End and residents and have come together with a um, community agreement that the land bank is taking to whoever will develop um, a community benefits agreement so um, right. the land bank in Albany has been is, is is a um, they've been a great ally. All right, that's good to know. Yeah, um, and the, as you know, the but for everybody else's sake, the director of the Albany County Land Bank, Adam Zaranko, is also the president of the statewide association. He's been spreading the word association wide about um, this initiative. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. So some some of the projects that we have. Um, then eyeing is uh, the creation in, in, of more green space um, in the neighborhood and, and keeping as things develop, making sure that green space remains. We also, because there's, there's a need for employment and job training, um, there's also a lot of historic buildings that could be rehabbed. The problem is it costs more to rehab them at this point. So one of the things that we've been looking at is doing a um, green job training program where um, we we would focus on other things at the Radix Center, um, but also be working at uh, trying to, to teach people different carpentry and, and building trade type skills to, to and actually rehab some of the buildings um, in the process. So these, these have been um, ongoing discussions, and then also um, ecologically sustainable different green jobs that um, we would focus on at Radix. So ideas, there's, there's, we're excited, there's many, many directions. 
And for everybody's sake, also um, amazing work in the south end with uh, air quality monitoring, um, particularly near the port. Uh, DEC partnered with some of the groups, maybe Radix too, um, very innovative uh, methods of testing air quality throughout the community and how it changes from one, one place to another. Yeah, we just got those results back. We've been very involved in that process um, and, and in activism leading up to that study being uh, undertaken. Yeah. And um, we uh, conducted a survey, part of, part of the initial push um, at Ezra Prentice Homes, which is a public housing complex really nestled in the port and on a high traffic road. And we've observed over 30% rates of asthma for youth, 46% um, for teenagers, and 33% for adults. And so um, yeah. those are incredibly high rates. So that is something that we um, are paying very, very close attention to and have been very involved in. Okay, great. Yeah. Hi, uh, this is Bianca. Yeah, I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Uh, so Bianca Shaw here with NYSERDA uh, Communities and Local Government. Kelly had to step away, uh, but I just want to chime in and, and say um, good stuff. I think we're really interested and curious to see what comes out of this this effort. Um, but I think we, Kelly and I were just talking, I think we'd both be interested in participating in that training, if that's an option. Uh, so just wanted to put that out there and, and see what your thoughts are. Yes, um, thank you, and that would be great. Uh, I, in the slide, I think it mentioned agency participation in the Albany branch of it, but um, you guys are located out in Buffalo, so push, Hester, uh, I may have mentioned this before, it'd be great if we can have a little agency panel squeezed into the first, um, uh, the first training in March, too. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, we're just just talking about it here. Like, I don't think we have um, any issue if like Bianca and Kelly actually wanted to participate in the you know the week long. I know that might be a uh, you know a, a big ask for just a time commitment from them. But yeah, you're, Bianca, you guys are more than welcome to you know audit all or some of the the week long in Buffalo for sure. Great. And maybe, maybe even a little space on the agenda there to um, again that'll be we'll have more headquarters people in the Albany training, but uh, you know, I, I, the folks that are out in the field in Buffalo, I think they uh, would have something to uh, lend to the, uh, to the green leaders. Yeah, and I think even that day four in the week yeah. in training institute, you know, there's, there's time we've already budgeted uh, to do that kind of landscaping and to invite in um, you know, the likes of NYSERDA, DOS, HCR, and others to uh, kind of talk from their perspective about um, you know, kind of you know, braiding resources or, or drawing down resources to support you know, our objectives. Great. So maybe um, Bianca, and I know Kelly's not on, but we could talk offline um, between Hester and, and the PUSH team with you all to kind of identify, you know, like what do you like to kind of bring in, in addition to being a participant throughout the week, like on that fourth day to have a panel or have a, a, a presentation um, just so that we can kind of a lot for the right amount of time and do any prep work um, prior to. Sure. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Hi, this is Scott from Radix. <clears throat> do you have any ideas this far in advance what the, the daily schedule is going to be for the March training in Buffalo as far as hours? Yeah, um, I don't have it right in front of me, but I think essentially it goes from about 9 to like 6 each day. Um, so we definitely have some space built in for breaks, um, for meals together. We have um, some time built in for like if you want to go see Niagara Falls or like, you know, having group dinners. Um, we have a play scheduled. So there's, there's it's, a, it's a pretty... Um, intense commitment to be with one another during this time and also we like need and appreciate like rest um so but i i think i can share that with with folks 
we're pretty like with the caveat that it may like wiggle a little bit, um, but we're, we're pretty close to it being um, super solid. So I'm I'm happy to share that with with people. Is, does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. Um, just wondering also, and it's a requirement that each group send at least one participant for all five days. I guess my question is, would it be possible if, if one person, for instance, had to miss a day that they could send somebody uh, as a substitute for one day, or d does the same person need to be there for the entire duration of the, the training? I think ideally we will have, like, ideally we would like a cohort of your folks to be there from beginning to end, um, because it all really builds on on things, but I think we can figure out that offline with that. Yeah. Yeah, to the best yeah, of your ability, we please. So we, like we, we, we respect that a week is a long time to not be in your home. <laughs> Um, please make your best effort, though. That that was the intent of the solicitation and the budgets that we got, um, and you know we wanted to maximize. This is pretty intensive. We'd like, uh, ideally, all of your participants to 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 make their best effort to attend all of this. So, do you think that we should be planning to come up the Sunday night and leaving Saturday morning, or do you think you wouldn't start till later on Monday and possibly end early on Friday? Just trying to plan if it's even more time. Yeah, I think I think Sunday night, and then you know, just knowing where folks are from across the state, I, I think we will end like early afternoon on Friday. So you could probably plan for travel Friday, late afternoon, early evening. Yeah, I believe our our like our schedule for Friday the twenty seventh goes on the very late, like it closes at two. And it could be earlier, depending on, but yeah. I, I have another question. This is Stacy from Radix. Do we, um, how many people can we send? Is there, is, it, it was, because it was a little unclear in the application whether it was, um, just three or whether we could, if other board members or, or um, volunteers were interested in coming, if, if they would be welcome also? Uh, yeah, I, I think we'd like three. That I believe that was the number in the RFP. I don't have it in front of me. Um, but let me check here. I mean, if you want to bundle up or, I mean, you have a budget. You have a pretty generous budget for travel. So I'm going to see if internally here, just check off with our fiscal people. I think as long as you stay under budget, um, the more the merrier. Yeah, and I think in okay. terms of space, we can accommodate, you know, probably more than three per organization, especially you know, in light of the fact there's just three green leaders when we were planning for six. So I think if you get the green light from, from Paul, um, yeah, we could accommodate additional folks. And I will say, too, if, you know, if, if not quite knowing, um, you know, your organizations, you know, very well at this point, if there's, uh, you know, members, volunteers, you know, I think it's not just paid staff, but, um, you know, there are like grassroots leaders that you're working with in your communities, like by all means, like we would really encourage you to involve them in this project too. Great. Absolutely. I, yeah, we, we did, oh, sorry. No, um, I was just gonna say, it's just affirming that, that message. Part of the technical assistance piece also will be that if you find that you have, um, that, you know, that each going through the first week of training, you're like, oh my gosh, the just transition, all of my staff need to, like, hear about this, we need to do a training, like, those are things that also we can, um, we can talk about, like, moving forward so that all of, everyone in the organization on, on the same page, you're getting the kind of resources that, um, yeah, so there's pull, pull outable pieces of, um, of this week. Another question is for the training um, here in Albany, obviously that, that would be a lot easier for us to get people to come to. Is there a cap on that, attendees? I, mean, I think, yeah, that's a good question too. I think we, we, we haven't done um, you know, too much advanced like logistical thinking on that and we, we may actually like, you know, consult with, with you all about, you know, space and 
uh, you know, I think Paul had made just kind of a generic offer of maybe, you know, space within like the, the state capital complex to, to meet, but if there's uh, space within the neighborhood, like we could look at that as well. So I think we'll be in touch in the early 2020 as we begin planning some of the logistics for that second week of training. Great. Yeah, we definitely have spaces. Um, cool. Good. We should, uh, so obviously if, if folks have additional questions, um, feel free to, to shoot them over to, to the Push or Hester Street teams or, or to Paul and his team and, and we'll get responses out. Um, recall that the webinar is being recorded and we'll share out the, the webinar so the colleagues who were unable to participate. Um, but yeah, with the five minutes left, I'm going to turn it back over to Isela to close us out with some next steps. Sure, and I think a lot of, thank you, uh, a lot of the questions that folks asked. To the, to the final slide, thanks. Um, so as the slide changes, um, I'll just start reviewing some of the next steps. Um, you'll notice, uh, or you probably notice that, uh, on the calendar that Emily took us through community profiles kept appearing, and so, you know, kind of recognizing that um, the, um, the TA team here you know, it, we don't um, necessarily are super familiar with your neighborhoods and your the, the, the uniqueness of them. And so we want to kind of start um, to give you some assignments, um, but, you know, take a lot of that, that bulk from you um, to establish some community profiles. And so we have just have some draft um, samples on, on this slide. But really, you know, we kind of would want to know who your team is, what the general demographics um, are in, in the city or in the neighborhood that you're focusing in or your, you know, the, the kind of study area, if you will. Um, um, and then, you know, again, like thinking about the potential tracks or focus areas, um, I know you all have, a, you know, even just like Radix, you all mentioned a couple of amazing ideas. Um, and so we'll start um, scheduling some individual calls with each of, y each of the green leaders um, in January to kind of get through the information that we need either for us to look for, if you have it readily available so that we can work together to craft these community profiles um, and plan to have each of you throughout the first three days of the training have an opportunity to really um, share about your community and the work that you do um, in a more extensive way than say just like a general introduction. Um, you'll also in January, uh, in early to mid-January kind of post the holidays, post the new year, um, you'll get an email from from Clark over at PUSH um, with some logistics information um, so that you all can start planning your travel, um, lodging, et cetera, uh, for um, the first session in March. And that, again, is March 23rd from the 27th. Um, well, in, in our individual calls with you all, we'll also kind of check in about April. Or, you know, we're considering two weeks there in late April, and so we'll kind of um, check in with each of you and identify what's the best uh, time for everybody to maximize um, full participation. And that's all I have. Um, and again, on behalf of Hester Street, thank you, and, and we're so excited um, to finally get this off the ground um, and to, to meet you all and get to know you all and, and work together to develop amazing projects. Wonderful. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. We're done on, you know, with our presentation, Paul. Um, a couple yeah. minutes left if you just want to, you know, close everybody out for good here. Yeah, sure. Can't wait to get back out to Buffalo. And I'm sure spring will have sprung by the 23rd of March. Um, and uh, I'll get answers to a couple of these questions, especially about uh, the number of people to attend um, out to you soon. Thanks, everybody. Hey, thanks everybody. Again, it's great to see uh, some of these, some familiar faces, and uh, hopefully look forward to working with you uh, as we move forward. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. You.